Well, guy. That's one too. Yeah, you got to give him a second. All right, guys. Well, good morning. Uh, my name's Al Ogeron. Uh, I do the ripener work for the LSU Ag Center. So we'll talk about ripeners and what function they have in our, our industry and, and some of the research that we, we've done. You know, uh, sugarcane is a tropical plant and we're growing cane in a subtropical environment. Um, when we start processing cane in, in September, the cane is not mature. Um, you know, our varieties mature faster than anywhere in the world, but we still need some help. Last year, we had a, a terrible thing. We had a, a killing freeze, uh, or several killing freezes during the crop, but uh, we had quite a bit left to process. So, uh, you know, compared to the rest of the world that can wait it out, we, we can't. So we, we need some help. And uh, chemical ripeners are, are what we have been using uh, since the 1980s to, to help us out. Uh, the first uh, chemical ripener that was labeled was Palato, which was glyphosate. And we still use it today as a primary ripener uh, tool in our, our toolbox. Um, you know, really with, without that, that key component, the Louisiana sugar industry doesn't look like it does today. We won't. We don't have 516,000 acres. Uh, we can't be competitive uh, if, if if we don't do that. We we passed on a little handout, and we'll talk about some of the work we we did. Um, and and it was based on comments from producers of uh, of particularly this variety behind me. This is uh, 615 HO12 615. Uh, you know, whenever I started in. Uh, this industry, there, there was a, a pretty bad stigma that, that cane didn't come back real well after being treated with glyphosate. Um, and, and I really think the paradigm kind of changed when 384 came out and, and uh, we got some, some uh, wild germplasm into some of these varieties. Um, but we're starting to, to, to push a, uh, away a little bit potentially from it. And, and growers have, have commented that this variety, while it looks like a million bucks in plant cane, uh, really is coming back erratic after ripener application. So we did some work in Point Capi Parish last week, uh, last year, um, to look at a couple different rates of, of, of glyphosate. So they got two different sides to this handout. The first one has got the HO12615 at the top of it. We'll talk about some of that work. We put out three different rates of glyphosate, a really low rate, the standard five ounce rate, and a higher rate. And then we added some, some other treatments as well. Uh, so. When, when we looked at sucrose recovery, uh, we had really good sucrose recovery where we added um, the glyphosate to the treatment uh, as it, to the cane as expected. Um, but it was very noticeable. Mark Carey and I rated the plots um, about f four weeks uh, after harvesting that, that the cane came up back a whole lot slower. The return was a whole lot slower where we had the glyphosate treatments on. And in the spring, it was even more apparent. We did some some, some shoot counts. Uh, and when we had the high rate, which was six and a half ounces, which is a legal label rate to put out on cane, you had about as half, half as many shoots there as compared uh, to the untreated and, and some of the other treatments. So one of the things uh, Dr. Caleb Daly uh, did some work on, on from USDA before he left, it was mixing modus. Now, modus is not a herbicide like glyphosate is. Modus is a plant growth regulator, and it affects a hormone in the plant called gibberellins. So it has everything to do with cell elongation. So let's talk about how glyphosate works first, then we'll talk about modus. So we're in grain growth phase. This cane's growing an inch a day. Our goal is to slow down vegetative growth, but not kill that plant. We want it to be green. We need it to be a sugar factory. Uh, so if it's not using its energy for vegetative growth, it uses it to store sugar in that plant. So that, that's what we're trying to do with glyphosate. Not trying to kill it, we'll put a sublethal dose, but we're trying just to reduce the vegetative growth. Well, modus on the other hand, like I said, affects gibberellins, and gibberellins has everything to do with cell elongation. So if you block that cell elongation, again, green plant, it's gonna store sucrose. Um, we, we found modus to be a little bit more inconsistent when you use it alone. But when we use it in combination with glyphosate, we get that same same bump. So what we did, uh, Dr. Daly did is looked at a half rate of glyphosate with 11 ounces of modus, which is a really low rate of modus. And if you look at these results from last year, uh, practically the same pound, uh, pounds of sugar per ton of cane. So that's a really good thing. But when you look at 
the number of shoots that we had in the spring looked great, looked like the untreated check. So it really brings a potential. If you flip that sheet to that, to that other side, we've been looking at these treatments for a number of years uh, and, and on a number of different varieties. Uh, so on this sheet, we have an untreated check. We have um, the Roundup Pyramax, which is the standard that is five ounces of Pyramax 3 or 5.3 ounces of Pyramax 2. And then the half rate with the motor treatment on the end. In just about every case, we, we gain the same amount of sugar per ton uh, with, with this treatment. Uh, and when you look at sugar per acre, we're, we're what and what with this the standard uh, treatment. So, you know, it, it really uh, is a tool, I think, looking forward at some of the, these new varieties that, that may add some, some value to us. The most expensive thing that a cane producer does is plant an acre of cane. So if we can extend that stubble by one or two years, you're, you're really doing something. So um, varieties like 804, the 615, I really see a fit. Now the cane on the other side of Sam is 885. It's a new variety, we've done some work with it. It looks like it's gonna respond really well. We've also tested a number of new experimental ripener compounds. There's one that we're kind of excited about called the Mazamox. Um, still got a long way to go before we get a label for it, but it really looks like it has a, a great potential out of the 80 or so products that I, I've tested in my short time with LSU. It looks like uh, this may be one that we can kind of sink our teeth into and, and, and uh, have another uh, tool to ripen king. So with that, any questions? Um, have I gone over 40 days with the half rate versus the regular rate that we use? I have not, Lance. Um, all I'll tell you is anecdotal evidence. Uh, Mr. Brian Harang is, is a big believer of the half rate of glyphosate and 11 ounces of modus, and his standard is 40 days. He said he, he feels like five more days makes a, a huge difference to, to him. But, but I haven't looked at it you know, personally. All right, guys. Well, thank y'all for being here. And, and we'll try to get y'all out. Sugar cane, sweet sugar cane. The sweetness of our southern.